heard. But what I want to say is this. From the moment you entered into relationship with God and he began a good work in you, this was the promise that God made to you at that point. This was the commitment that God made to you at that point, even if you didn't know it. What God said and what God promised and what God committed to at that moment in your life was this. I have begun a good work in your life. I'm going to keep on working. Now listen carefully. Some of you this morning have had highs. Some of you have had lows. Some of you have backslidden and failed God and then come back. Some of you have walked with the Lord upward. Some of you have walked and stumbled and walked and stumbled and walked and stumbled. But it has not made a difference to God in His commitment to you. When you did not feel Him, God's commitment was the same in your life. I am working and I'm going to bring it. My goal in you and my work in you is to bring it to completion. Some of you have felt God has put his, taken His hands off of me because I've resisted Him. But God, that's just your feeling. God has not given up working on you. There have been times when you have been slow to respond to God, but God has not given up working on you. Some of you have stumbled and fallen and gotten up again, but God has not stopped working in your life. Some of us at times have actively, actively resisted God. But let me tell you something on God's side. He has not stopped working in your life. You may have said no. You may have resisted. But God said, I'm not going to give up on you because I have entered into relationship with you. I have brought you through Jesus Christ, my son, who gave his life for you and shed his blood for you. I have brought you out of death into life. I love you. You're my child. And I'm not going to let you go now. You think he's going to let you go after he gave you Jesus? That's not the type of father he is. That's not the type of God he is. Rest in that. Have confidence in that. Not complacency, but be confident. God's not going to let you go. He's going to keep working. He hasn't given up on you. You may have given up on yourself. You may have grown disgusted with yourself and with your self-efforts, but God hasn't. God hasn't. He loves you. He loves you, and He has continued to work. He's not a million miles away. Although at times our disobedience and our sins make us feel that way, God has not taken His hands off of our life. If we are His children this morning, Morning. If we are his children, he has plans for us that he has not abandoned. Now sometimes, because of the results of our choices, God, the, the plans and the things that we will do may change somewhat, may be adjusted as it goes along, but God never gives up. God never lets go. He loves you. This should not give us complacency. Oh, well, I can live the way I want. I can do what I want, so it doesn't matter. God's going to keep on working. There's no complacency in this. But there should be, for some of us this morning, a confidence in God. He's not letting you go. He's not giving up on you. He is at work in your life. He alone knows what we can be. He alone knows what we can do. I think sometimes our expectations for ourselves are limited because of our failures are limited because of our experiences, are limited by, by, what, by our weaknesses. But here is what Paul says about the power of God working in us. If you're feeling limited this morning, look with me at Ephesians 3.20 from the New Living Translation. Ephesians 3.20. A wonderful verse. A wonderful verse that tells us the truth of God at work in our lives. In verse 20 it says, Now all glory to God, who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, 
to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Let's read it together this time. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Now some would look at this, and we're going to leave it up here for just a little bit, and you might think, yeah, but this is talking about what God will do. This is talking about God do this and God do that. That can be included, but here's the reason we look at context when we study the Bible. If you back up a few verses from this verse, do you know what you will find? This verse is the benediction to a prayer that Paul has just been praying. Now look at this again, and then we're going to back up a few verses. And the prayer that Paul is praying has to do not with these great things that God is going to do out there, not with these great things that all the power that's going to go. It has to do with what God is doing in us, the way he's changing us, the way he's molding us, the way he's pouring his love and his power in this. And Paul says this is through his mighty power. He's able to do so much more than we might ask or think. Listen this morning. You may think, oh God, I will never be more than this for you. Oh God, because of my weaknesses, because of my past, because of my failures, I can only ever grow this much in you. I'll always be a baby Christian because I can't overcome in this area or in that area. Look at what the Word of God says this morning. Look at what the promise of God is to you because His mighty power is at work in you. And let God increase your expectation. He is able to do infinitely more in us, in us than we might ask or think. Sometimes we ask, oh God, would you just... And God says, I can do so much more than that. I see you, and you are my masterpiece, and this is what I'm going to do in you. And when I've done it in you, then I'm going to do it through you. This is the reality of the power of God in your life. And in my life this morning, don't be limited by past failures. Don't be limited by circumstances. Give God your weaknesses. Give God the struggles. Give God these areas and let him do more than you can ask or think. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now let's look at the verses that come before this. The prayer that Paul is praying as he comes up to this beautiful benediction in Ephesians 3, 16 and 19. And I want to challenge you again. If you are struggling in this area, go back to these verses and meditate on them. Memorize them. In, in Ephesians 3, 16 through 19, Paul's prayer is this. And by the way, by the way, whenever you come to the New Testament and you read one of these great prayers of Paul, Please do not say, well, it's a prayer. That's what we hope for. It's inspired of the Holy Spirit. And Paul would not have been inspired of the Holy Spirit to pray this were it not God's promise and desire for every one of his children. Were it not possible through the power of God to be and to live and to do and to experience this. It wouldn't be in the Bible otherwise. So take it out of the hope so category and put it into the possible category. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources. Oh, now that puts it on a different level, doesn't it? It's not my resources. It's not my abilities. From His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Not my weak, limited strength, but His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Oh, I love this part. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Do you know the most secure... Pause there just a minute. The most secure children, the most secure children are not... And you can see it in the world around us. Are not children who have been indulged or given everything they wanted the most secure children you will ever see, the most confident children you will ever see, are those that know my parents love me. My parents love me. I am loved. 
they care for me. True? True. There's a confidence there. And some of us, in the physical and in the natural, we don't have that, do we? We came up in homes that, where there wasn't a lot of love, and we have not had that confidence in the natural. But what I want you to know is this. There is something and there is someone greater than your natural experience. There is something and there is someone greater than your physical family, and that is God and being brought into his family. And Paul says, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. You do not have to be limited by the bondages and the weaknesses and the failings of earthly parents or other family members who, who failed, who weren't as loving as they should have been, perhaps, who didn't care for you as they should have who didn't protect you and nurture you as parents should. But you have a God who does and who is. You have a Father who more than, more than, more than makes up for that as he brings you into his family. So as you come into his family, learn to know him and trust him and let your roots go down in his love. Let your roots go down in his love. And as your roots go into his love, he will heal and strengthen these parts of your life that were not strong from earthly families and earthly situations. Let God do it. He wants to. He wants to. It is his plan to. And I'm not trying to be simplistic. I'm, I'm really not. I'm really not. But all I can tell you this morning is this is what I see in the Word of God. This is what I see God saying about his love for you and his care for you. He has come to restore you and me and make us new and whole. And so your roots go down in his love. And may you have the power, and that's in verse 18, to understand, as all God's people should. All. You mean every one of us, not just the pastors? Every one of us. Every one of us. As all God's people should. How, will you read this part with me? How wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ though it is too great to understand fully. And then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? All that comes from God. Brothers and sisters, we live in a broken world. We live in a fallen world. We live even in a church world that is imperfect. And at, and at times, the very ones who really should, as Christians, should love us and nurture us may cause harm. Sometimes unknowingly, sometimes it's done on purpose. Let God restore. Let God make you complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from Him. That is God's plan for you. That is God's possibility in you. That is God's promise to you. And it is because of God's power at work in you. So this is what God is doing. But you and I do have a part, don't we? We do have a part. And I want us to go back again to Philippians 2.12. And this time we're going to display NIV and NLT again. And I want us to look at our part, because we do have a part. We do have a part. And I want you to see this morning, it's important that you understand God's part and really, truly what He is doing and what is possible in Him and what He wants to do. We've got to know that. Because if we don't know that, then we will live forever in the lie of the enemy that keeps us just here. So we've got to know God's part. But we have a part as well. And Paul says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But you know what? When we read that, that sounds kind of bad to work out our salvation. It sounds bad, doesn't it? It sounds like some of the religions and some of the past that many of us have been part of. I've got to work hard and then maybe I'll be saved. Okay. He says, dear friends, and that encourages me because he says, work hard, but he calls them dear friends. But let's look at this. 
Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. And let me pause and look at this part just a minute. With deep reverence and fear has to do, if in, in Roman times, for a slave or a servant and his or her master. And it was, would be the desire of the servant to please the master and to do what the master wanted him to do. Not in a fear, I will be punished or I will be beaten, but in the sense that this is a master that I love and serve and I'm doing what he's calling me to do. And that's the picture that is there. But here Paul is saying, work hard in this because it's important. Work hard in this area because of the seriousness of what this is all about. And what is it all about? Listen carefully. It is God's life in me. It is God's purpose being worked out in me. It is God's plan. He had from the very beginning of creation that he would send his son for me. This work hard is a special phrase. And you know what it means? You know how they used it? You know how the Greeks used it? It's a beautiful, beautiful picture. It was used, for example, of a mine, like a, 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 a gold mine or a silver mine or some other type of mine. And what it meant was this. The, I, the picture was this. That word would be used to when you go into a mine and you work in the mine until all of the gold until all of the silver or the precious metals or whatever it was, all the potential of that mine has been brought out of the mine. The other way this word was used was this. Here's a field and it's harvest time. There's a potential for a great harvest. Work hard so that all of the harvest is brought in from that field. All the potential that is there. All the potential. And I love that picture. Brothers and sisters, in your life and my life, oh, what potential there is. God knows. God knows. And it is God at work in you as you and I work hard that that full potential in our lives might be brought out. All that God has for you, all that God wants to do in you, He wants to make you Christ-like, He wants to grow you up in Him, He has good things planned way back when for you to do. But those things can't be accomplished unless we are working hard and working with the power of God in our lives. So, close in prayer.